So how in the world do you take time away from your small business? Well, I've got an interesting story. The rock stood about 25 feet, so two, three stories in the air above the water hovering over Phelps Lake in the Grand Teton National Park. The water was cold, it was clear, you could see the bottom of the lake giving this illusion that it was far too shallow to jump. But having watched a number of others take the plunge, my kids and I decided to give it a go while Ashley agreed to be the videographer from the lake level. And so, splash, we took the plunge. The temperature of the water was matched by the exhilaration of the jump. It was cold, it was thrilling, and throughout the hike into and out of Phelps Lake, we enjoyed elevation changes, landscape changes, spectacular views. We saw 10 different bears, some within about 10 to 15 yards from us. And I can honestly say throughout the hike, I did not worry about our business. It was freeing. Really, it was freeing. For context, at the time of this hike, Business on Purpose has been liberating business owners for about six and a half years. We founded in 2015. We've got a team of seven people, including me, two of which are part-time. A couple things you should know in order for me to take a full week away from the business, and we've actually taken more than that before, but this just happened to be a week this past time. I want you to know this. We are not a multi-million dollar business. As the owner, I am still very much involved in the day-to-day -day coaching of clients, and I am not independently wealthy. <laughs> so how was I able to take a solid week away from our business and the business actually grow and thrive and execute on our mission to liberate business owners from chaos? Uh, there's a couple things, four particular things that I want to take you through that I think are very helpful and will be very helpful for you. First, I want you to know that I wrote and I continually update our vision story. The proverb, the proverb is very true. Where there is no vision, people really do scatter. This documented exchange between a Jewish prophet and God is also true. Write the vision down so that those who read it will run. Wait till it's appointed time because it will surely come. Every business owner that we serve has been taken through a vision story process. This is a written, multi-page, highly detailed layout of what they actually see as the future of their business, personally, financially, corporately, meaning their team structure and size, culturally, and also it clearly lays out who they serve and who they do not serve. This is a clear picture and one written by faith, and the reason is because we just can't see it, so we're literally writing it by faith to help bring clarity to what we see not only for ourselves, but also for our team. Every two months, we as a team host a simple online call with our entire team, all seven of us, called a vision day. It's not really a full day, but it's one hour where I read fully through the vision story, provide some commentary on where I see our business, and host a live Q&A with our entire team as an opportunity to interact with our vision. It's exciting to see that vision story process is being morphed from a nice to have document to a must have living visual of the future of each business. If you wanna take time away from your business, you must have written clarity on the future of your business and your team must have the access to that same clarity. The second thing that we did is I planned this trip and all of our other trips about nine months ago. Now, I didn't actually do the trip planning, that's Ashley's expertise. But what I did is I calendared the trip. See, time is a non-renewable resource. I mentioned earlier that our business has been liberating other business owners from chaos for about six and a half years. Those are six and a half years that are in the books. No ways to get those back. We believe that we can find time to do the things that our business that matters most. The reality is that we will not randomly find one of life's hottest and non-renewable commodities, time. Instead, we must actively make or craft the time that we have in front of us. See, in November of each year, I sit down with a calendar for the following year and I begin to make my schedule for the year. Much of your week is repetitious. Meetings, emails, phone calls, making or creating or whatever it is that you do. Now, I know what you might say. Well, you don't understand. My week is so unpredictable. I, I'm gonna push back. Not really. It feels unpredictable because we've not made the time to stop and think through the weeks we've been given, the time we've been given, and how we will invest the currency of our time within each week. When I began thinking through the days, the weeks, the months, the quarters, and the entire year, that it provided me with a sense of stability. 
my schedule became an anchored dock moored within consistently choppy waters. No way that I hold that schedule 100% of the time. But if I can hold it just 50%, it's a massive game changer and gives me freedom to do the things that I have scheduled and have remembered to communicate precisely because it's been pre-scheduled. Whatever time of year it is for you right now, make the time to sit down with a calendar of the next 6 to 12 months and begin to mark out some block time for team gatherings, vision days, milestone events needed to push your mission, and of course, your time away from the business. Just a quick note, your team and your business need to see you leave from time to time. When you leave, it provides them the encouragement that they can lead the business without you. It literally lends them courage to lead. When you leave, it also exposes part of the parts of the business that are too dependent on you, that you can begin processing and delegating once you return. The third thing I did is I spent the weeks leading up to our trip communicating with our team and communicating with our clients. Something bizarre happens when you pre-schedule anything. It, 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 it's like it becomes gospel, not, not religious gospel, but an immovable reality that has been calendar. It gives you confidence to simply say with plenty of warning, hey team, we're going to be out on the third week of May or whenever it is. The team will simply respond, got it. Of course, if you're typically not away from your business, both you and your team may feel an uncomfortable nervousness, but it provides time to begin planning and to delegate all of the things that you normally do that others can take over while you're out. You begin communicating your time away weeks prior to leaving both with your team and based on your business with your customers and other vendor partners. In our business, I send a weekly communication to each one of our clients. So about three weeks uh, or sometimes two weeks prior to my time away, I go ahead and write out my communication to each client for the week that I'll be away and then using the powerful delay send feature on my email app. That's the delay send feature. I set up an email to send out the Monday that I'm away as if nothing has changed. Our weekly team meeting and also our weekly individual one-on-one -on -one check ins are also times that I share with our team a reminder that I'll be away and see if they need anything in preparation. Of course, it's not going to be perfect. But guess what? Even when you're here, it's not perfect. But at least it will be well communicated. The fourth thing that I do is I leave trusting the groundwork was laid. We consistently work on cultural ingredients like weekly team meetings, weekly coaches meetings, our 12-week plan and live events, our other every other monthly vision days, our annual training retreat, our master process roadmap. All of those things are culture ingredients that we build in. And I have got to trust the team will continue to lean in on those culture ingredients as much when I'm not here as they do when I am here. It's an exciting thing to be away as an owner and not only to see the team surviving, but to see that they are taking ownership in growing the business. Listen, you will never know if you do not leave your small business for a short season. You'll never leave your small business for a season if you do not write out a vision. You'll never write out a vision if you do not make time for it. And you'll never make the time for it if you do not have a plan to communicate. And you'll never communicate if you do not lay the groundwork. Your business and your team need you to leave periodically. You need yourself to leave periodically. Stand on top of a rock and take the plunge into a cold, deep mountain lake and be grateful. Do you have a healthy business? Are you a healthy business owner? You can take the quiz right now. Just go to mybusinessonpurpose.com forward slash healthy for the healthy owner business assessment. It's a beautifully designed assessment to walk you through different categories like vision, mission, values, clarity and implementation. Also, the dynamics of your team personality and a variety of other general categories to help give you a score of the health of your business. Once complete, you'll have the range of your score along with an explanation video to help you understand some next steps into being liberated from the chaos of working on your business. So go to mybusinessonpurpose.com forward slash healthy to take the assessment right now.